What's up? I'm back. I just finished taking my board exam license for the structural engineering licensing exam last week. So if you're taking the civil engineering PE, the professional engineering license, or the SE, the one that I just took, the structural engineering one, I'm going to be giving my perspective and my thoughts on if they're worth it and are they worth studying for in your career, going over the benefits of what those licenses do, pass rates, and some general study time as well. Second part of the video, I'm gonna be going over my personal experience uh, taking that SE exam multiple times. Because as some of you know, these exams and studying for them during your civil structural engineering career can wreak havoc in your life. But I'll show you how I got through those and some of the challenges I faced and maybe some test taking mindsets that you can take with you because unfortunately I am apparently an expert now at retaking these exams. All right, let's get started. First off is the PE civil engineering licensing exam. In the US, you take your FE first, the fundamentals of engineering, usually during school. So I'm assuming you've already taken that. So now you have a civil engineering job. And if it's still early on in your career, I 100% agree that it's going to be worth it for you to take that uh, PE exam and get that license right away, especially if you know that you're gonna be in the industry for uh, at least five years. This uh, civil engineering, professional engineering uh, PE li license allows you to stamp and sign drawings and essentially allows you to start your own business someday if that's something that you wanna do. If you're looking for a job, it definitely makes you stand out in the US. The PE is basically recognized throughout all the states. If you're an employee, you'll get a pretty good pay bump most likely, depends on your company, but it also opens up new opportunities such as promotions if you're working in a civil engineering firm. And it makes you a better engineer. You may be learning some subjects such as maybe geotech or transportation that you're not too familiar with or may not have been taught in school, but it does allow you to refresh on some of these fundamentals of civil engineering. And whatever your subject is that you wanna focus on, it's going to make you better at that. And the pass rates and the study time required for these tests are, are fairly reasonable. Looking at the NCES websites or looking at some of the statistics, you can probably see that the pass rates are around a 60% for the civil engineering uh, PE exams. And from my experience, it's usually around 100 hours of studying if you want to give it a good try. And at least in California, they are making it easier to take. It's an eight hour exam. From what I heard, you can take it pretty much after you graduate. Back in my day, they used to have us have like two, two years of experience before we could take that PE exam, depending if you had your master's or not. So you'd be working for two years and specializing in your subject. And then you forget all of that other, all of that other stuff that you learned in school. So when you take when you're studying for the test, you're pretty rusty. So it's great that you can take it pretty early on after you graduate and just focus on that and get that out of your career before you have a family and have all these things in your life that you have to worry about once you get more, more settled in, in the industry. And I've heard that they're transitioning to making it a computer-based test, so it should be easier to take as well. What about the SE exam, the Structural Engineering Licensing board exam. Is that worth it? Well, it's more complicated. To give you some basic backgrounds on the test, this structural engineering licensing exam is not required uh, in all of the U.S. states. There's only a, a handful of states that require this uh, SE exam license. And if you're a structural engineer, you're going to need it to sign and stamp drawings for uh, educational facilities, uh, for high rises, for essential structures such as hospitals, and it does vary from state to state as well. And this structural engineering license, it's it's a specialty license. So after you get your PE, you gotta be working in the structural engineering industry, I believe for about three years, and then you're eligible to take the test. So essentially, uh, it might be five years possibly before you can take your, your SE exam. So that's one thing that you have to consider. You may have a family by then, you may have other priorities, maybe you started your own business. It might be scheduling wise, really tough for you to take that exam. It's also going to be two parts. So it's going to be in total a 16 hour test, testing you on uh, typical gravity. And then the second part is the lateral loads such as wind and earthquakes. So a lot to cover, basically all the code books. And one of the biggest things to consider when, if you're trying to see if you want to take this test is the pass rates compared to the PE, which takes about 100 hours of studying and around a 60% pass rate. The SE exam is going to be a 16 hour test. On average, it's going to take you at least 300 hours of study time. And the pass rates range from 
30%, maybe to 40% as well. I believe gravity is around, hovering around 40%, and then part two, the lateral, that, that hovers around a 30% pass rate. That's like going into a class and the professor tells you to look to your left, look to your right, 70% of you are going to fail and you're going to be have to be working a full-time job most likely and after you finish that you're going to be studying for at least a minimum of 300 hours and if you don't pass statistically you probably won't if you retake it again the chances don't go up the chances are still going to be approximately 30 percent pass rates so you should have a backup plan in case things don't go your way you might have to plan for the long term and take that into account especially if you have family so i say taking the se exam is going to be worth it if your state requires it you know you're going to be in the industry the structural engineering engineering industry long term at least 10 years and that you work for a firm that designs these types of uh, buildings high rises hospitals uh, etc uh, whatever is required for that license because if you ever want to be a principal or reach the higher ranks of that firm or company they are most likely going to require an se license so it's definitely a long-term thing and you want to get it out of the way as soon as possible because as you know you're probably going to have a life five years in and going into my personal experience with it. So studying for this test, what I liked about it is that it definitely 110% just made me a better engineer. Because you know a lot working for five years in the industry, but all those little technical knowledge uh, items that might be in the code that you may have missed, it fills all those things in and it just reinforces what you know already. And I do think it is important that we take some, some sort of test like this because we are responsible for, as a civil engineers, as structural engineers, we're responsible for the safety and protection of the public that these structures and infrastructures are supporting. So that's why I'm an advocate for the PE and the SE. There are things that I think they can improve to, to maybe make it more less uh, intimidating so maybe more states can take it. For example, maybe if we can take it uh, right after the PE or something like that, because those two subjects kind of overlap, it'd be great if we can get all those technical things out of the way early on, earlier on in our career, instead of you can only take it five years later, at least in California. Maybe they, they can look into the pass rates as well, because that is a, a huge intimidating factor for people that are taking it. Is that good for the industry? Do we want to gatekeep the industry to those numbers where 30% pass, what's the re reasoning for that? Or maybe it's on the other side on, hey, how come the structural engineers aren't getting educated on those subjects? Maybe that's why the pass rates are so low. So my experience taking this exam, I took both at the same time, part one and part two. I focused a lot on part one, so I didn't study too much for part two, but I did pass part one on the first try. So that was pretty badass. At least I thought, but then uh, I, I definitely had trouble with the lateral. Uh, so that second, the first one I had trouble studying for, so I would just study next time. But the next time, you know, life got in the way. Things with the YouTube channel started picking up. I had events after work for ASCE YMF, and I, I wanted to say yes to those and saying yes to uh, a lot of other things while trying to balance work deadlines. Uh, that was tough, and I, I think that was definitely things I could have done better on terms of studying because I ended up last minute studying for like the last month, which I thought personally wasn't enough for me, but I did pretty well, but I was close, but not enough to pass. So I wasn't too surprised. So going into this, this one that I just took last week, I did go into it knowing the mistakes I made in terms of my study schedule. I got used to saying no a lot more because I know that's a part of me. I like, I like to say yes to new opportunities and I like to help others out and respond to their questions and comments, but it was just taking its toll, all those things and all the stress and I ended up just burning out for a bit. So I learned my lesson. So this time I got to work. I had a really good study schedule right after work. I'd study for about two hours every day after work and had to get updated with all the new codes because it was a new code cycle. So getting myself updated with all of those new procedures, I felt really good about how I studied this time. And my mindset going into these tests is I'm not trying to focus and or worry or be anxious about too much about uh, if I'm gonna pass or fail because I can't really, I think none of us can control what questions they put on those tests. I don't see too much value in worrying about that. All I can do myself is worry about how much I studied, how I prepared, and that's what I try to focus on when I'm going into these tests. And I try not to put too much of my self-worth in these tests because these are difficult tests, the PE, the 
the SE and like I said before, a lot of, I think the hardest part is just finding time to take and study for these. It's not necessarily the technical aspects of it. Sure, technically they're, they're tough, but the toughest part, especially when you're working full time, is finding the time and dedicating the time to study. So don't feel too bad if you don't pass. Just keep taking it, keep retrying it. Try to find out your mistakes and just keep getting better. If I pass, I'm gonna be ecstatic and I'm gonna be celebrating all of those failures that I've had and I'm just going to celebrate those failures and how much I just kept retrying and then I finally passed. That's gonna be a lot more meaningful than that first one, part one, where I just passed kind of just instantly. If I don't pass, yeah, it's gonna suck, but uh, I know the mistakes that I made, things that I can improve on, so I'm gonna keep uh, studying for that. And I'm gonna be taking comfort in the fact that it can help you out. If you didn't pass, you can at least say that you didn't fail as much as me. Man, I failed my exam. Well, at least I didn't fail as much as Matt. I made you feel better. So keep at it. Thanks again for watching. My next video, I'm thinking about making it uh, the math that's required in structural engineering. So stay tuned for that video if you wanna know what we actually use in the structural engineering industry compared to what you learn in school. So have a great day and I'll see you next time.